Uh, my name is Camille Salvon Abrahams. I, um, I wear a lot of hats, but today I'm wearing two hats. One, which is the Program Administrator for Animation at the University of Trent Tobago and the founder of Anime Carib Festival, which is a long-running festival focused on animation and digital media in Trinidad and Tobago. We are actually celebrating 14 years this year, which is quite a feat for the Caribbean. So coming from the island of Trinidad, I thought I'd share our story with you as far as how animation impacted on the creative industry. Um, some of the things that definitely needed to happen in order for this to be a success were the following, what you have up there, which is we needed to open minds, simply because animation, we did, we did not have a history of animation in, the, in Trinidad and Tobago. In fact, we did not have a history of animation in the Caribbean. There was no one to look back to, to guide us as to how to make this a reality. So, we had to open minds to this sort of new technology, which also in turn meant opening minds to digital society, digital economy, digital experience. It, is, it was really a sort of open, opening of the way for not just people, not just students, but also for government, state, businesses to start to look at animation as a lucrative area of study. Uh, we had to intervene, and, and with that I'm, I mean to actually create opportunities to be proactive about investing in the industry. And that is where the government came into place. I think you mentioned that. That was very, very important. Again, because we did not have that kind of backing to start with. Uh, we, have, we had to create uh, platforms, which is where, for instance, things like... Um, grant, grant funding, setting up of incubators, all these things needed to happen for us to make animation a, a success. And we had to open the way, and I'll explain this a bit later, open the way for the diaspora. That might be the, the, the it may sound like the simplest suggestion, but I think it's the most important suggestion I'm saying to you today as a Caribbean, as someone from the Caribbean. So. We are going to look at this using Trent Tobago as a case study. To give you a little background on animation, in Trent Tobago, it was non-existent 15 years ago. Non-existent. No animators. Nobody was doing it. It was not in schools. It was not on people's minds. I came back to Trent Tobago as a qualified animator. And uh, there were several things that I had to do. And one of the things that stood out for me is that when I went into, for instance, the bank, for instance, to say, well, okay, I'm going to open the first animation studio. And I was very, very excited about it. And the bank said, what's animation? Explain to me what is animation. Um, you know, I, I can't see anything tangible in this. You know, it's, 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 it, it, I, I can't put it on a shelf and sell it. And of course, I didn't get any support for that. So, um, and that was my first experience where I realized that something needed to be done if I'm to exist in the Caribbean. Either that or I leave the Caribbean, which I didn't want to do. Nobody wants to do that. So this is the way we sort of, I worked with the, the government, with the university to, 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 to open people's minds. We did that through the, through the University of Trent Tobago where we created the Diploma in Animation Studies, which is going on now. Um, at the Univers University of the West Indies, there's a film program. Um, the government has a program called YTEP, which really is about social training. It's not just about having courses, it's about going into the community and opening the, uh, creating sparks through using the digital media for young people who may be just not working out of a job or educated but cannot get a job. And that was an intervention that was very, very important. So this, I think, you would term social education. And of course, CXC, I don't know if in Suriname if CXC is, is being used. Okay, so CXC is the Caribbean Examination Council, and this is where all of the uh, 15 to 16 year olds the exams go through the CXC syllabus. Um, and we recently, I worked with a panel to create the first digital media CXC uh, course for study. 
um, and uh, we should be also getting a CXC course in animation and game design. And th those are things that are not traditional in the Caribbean. They're not traditionally what we study. So it took a lot of convincing the powers that be that this needed to be on the syllabus. And of course, Anime Carib Festival, which is an, a way of creating that interest and also opening the mind. So I'm going to show you now a movie, a short clip on Anime Carib. And I need to use it from here just to make sure it shows. Uh, sound. What that does is obviously create an interest for, for the young generation because you expose them to the possibilities, you expose them to the new technology, you expose them to what is happening there, and you open them up to understanding that this is a possibility as far as a career. So that's one way we do it. Now, we also, as I said to you, we intervene um, to create positive, positive impact. And we are very proactive about this. Um, I mentioned about the White Air program that is ongoing. Uh, the Ministry of Planning and Development has a program called Eye to Eye, where funding comes to innovation and innovative ideas, and it goes through a whole process. But that is that is a, the way of sort of creating that spark because we it's it's non-existent, and it's very important. We are proactive about this. Film TT, which provides funding for film animation. It's another way of impacting positively. Um, one of the things that I would like to share with you is how the creative sector could also impact not just on a technological level and an education level, but there can also be sort of social impact. So um, in, in collaboration with CARICOM, we decided to look at the young offenders in the prisons, young prisons. So these are young men between 14 and 17. As with any country, there are issues with crime, okay? I'm sure, every country, right? They're, so it's not Trinidad alone. But we were able to look at this situation and see, you know, could we spark some kind of um, hope for these young guys? Because they are going to come out. They are going to come out. And if they come out, the choice is, do I go back into that life? Or if I love something, maybe I wanna, maybe I wanna get into that. So we, we uh, this is a five minute documentary I wanna share with you, with um, a one day course we did at the prisons, Young Offenders Prison in Trinidad. I hope you can see it.
ITC is basically an institution for training. And there are a lot of guys who may come in here because they were not guided accordingly. Animation could be a tool for rehabilitation because it's a way where these guys could actually showcase um, their, their experiences through animation. Well, my name is Marvin Alexander, and the piece that I did was um, Jenny. For me, well, that was a new experience, because all the time I can, I can I know I would have drawn. Because when I was older, I was in drawing thing. I come inside, come inside here. I really know I could thing. And when animation come to, my, come to me, well, I saw I would try it out and see something work and really work. My name is Prem Bajri, and I am the director or producer of Going the Distance for Girls Love. The reason I did that piece is because to naturally these days, sometimes certain girls have to go to the extent. And since Beyonce Singh put her ring on it, it tends that women always want us to go beyond our natural thing. So I decided to make something like two love words because my name, some people say it means love. So I'm a person about love. Analysis role in this whole thing. Libraries are not only about books, we are about the total development of people. And um, we, we knew that we had to provide a service to the institutionalized, hence this was the first library that we had within the prison system. Sometimes when I came up, when I come up, you know, to do others as a library attendant right now, no. and sometimes when I come here and I work, you know, it keeps me occupied and makes me happy. It keeps my mind at ease. The experience I had doing animation for the first time was kind of challenging because I wasn't able to like grasp the ideas at once and you know to put it down because you know the, I'm not really accustomed with showing with a mouse and you know, I, I know I more prefer pencil, you no, know, or pen. So it was a bit challenging and, and gathering the ideas, but at the end, I believe the product was, you know, interesting. My name is Akil Mitchell, and the piece that I worked on was Sticky and the Seed. Sticky was saying, no matter what I did, and he said, what are you going to get some money? And he came in here, well, all right. I could build a garden, but he didn't really have nothing on it. Through the idea, a seed form, a seed burst out and come out. So Sticky said, well, all right, I'll go plant this. People laugh, ha-ha, silly. That thing grew and grow. Sticky, you're mad. And Sticky, you didn't really study that. Sticky, grow your seed. Pray every day, water it every day. And yeah, and then Sticky, grow your seed. But Sticky was actually a portrait of myself. Because I believe everybody had a journey. But only in Sticky, in Sticky, I could have seen the ending. I can't see the ending of myself. I still have a long journey ahead. Well, the animation I made was a little boy who was homeless. And he's sitting on the side of the street. And he didn't know where to go now. And then our beams shine from, from the clouds. And the, 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 the light was talking to him. Now. And then, well, they have a feature either here. And that's make everything perfect in life, you know. And then, you know, walking on the street and studying well, which party you stay and which party you do now. And then after, he started kneel down and put the father and ask him for guidance and things. And the father answered him and then again at home with family and things. I'm very, I'm very proud of, of what they did last year and what they are doing now, because last year they did uh, a workshop for basically one day. And the, the, the 
quality, the 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 um what they produced was very amazing and was very touching to see exactly the type of talent these young men have within them. I have so much ideas to make so much production and by this by this animation course coming in, I'm given a chance to express some of my ideas. So it becomes a new page to do something else. If I had a magic one, um, when I walk off these gates, I, would, I wish for um, a better life. You know, be able to be successful in life you know, and make a difference. You know. the impact that we could have on the penal system just by the use of things like this. And I thought it was very important. Okay, so I'm gonna skip through because I'm, uh, this took up a little bit of time, but these are also the other sort of in, uh, entrepreneurial things that occur in Trinidad and Tobago in order to encourage this. So for instance, microfinancing, Exim Bank, which is a, a bank that supports film and animation production. Ustat, which is the University of Trinidad and Tobago that has an incubator, sorry. <laughs> incubator for young students, uh, Yui Kariri student incubator, um, and all of these things are really to encourage um, new ideas. So for instance, I would want to share with you, um, this is a piece that was done using something called a cultural um, carnival character called Mukujambi. Do you all have that here, where they're on stilts, dancing stilts? Okay, so the product was Cricks, which is a biscuit that everybody in Trinidad knows, and I think it's sold here too. And they sort of co uh, combined the Cricks um, product with the culture through animation. And this is what. Cricks makes it better. Right? That's a combination. Culture, music, animation, you name it. Um, however, the client was approached to take it further by looking at augmented reality. How many of you all know about augmented reality here? Fabulous. All right? So it's, 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 it's not even a new technology. It's out there quite a while. But they decided to take it a little further and say to the client, this is what you can do. And I'll tell you what the response was after. So, what you're seeing is someone's phone viewing the character dancing. So, if you have your phone, uh, once all, all the processes are done, you can actually see the character in front of you as if it's there. So, you're seeing it there, it's a little bit, all right, but that, that is just with the person's phone over the, the piece of paper. And the client's response to that was, oh, it's fabulous, it's great, wow, fantastic, but our, our Caribbean people are not ready for that, so therefore, you know, we don't want to take that risk. And those are the kind of challenges that we are having, that the technology is out there, but corporate probably, or even government agencies in some cases, you know, um, don't want to take the risk to move it that further. It's something we definitely have to work on. Now, we talked about opening the way. This is really, really, really important. This is dear to my heart. I think the diaspora has, could have a huge impact on the Caribbean because what they can do is bring back the, 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 bring back the quality one, bring back the technology, and plus they would have a sort of tie to our region because they're from here. So this picture here is very, very important. What we have here, a group of young Trinidadians, starting from left, this young gentleman is from Rockstar Games in Canada, Trinidadian. The one next to him works at Pixar, Trinidadian. The one next to him works at Disney, Trinidadian. That ugly person in the middle is me. I'll skip to the next person, um, Lucasfilm. And then the next person, um, Disney, all from Trinidad.
And what we've been able to do through the festival, through the creation of uh, an association, we've been able to get these guys to come back to Trinidad and Tobago and share. Every time they come to the festival, they share their knowledge, they create networks, they do, um, they, they make connections. So for instance, with outsourcing for animation, they could bring those sort of platforms back. So we need as a, as a, as a community, as a region, to make the return of the diaspora a little bit easier because getting them here was not an easy task. We had probably about six years of the festival where we invited them. Nope, not wasting my time. Nope, too much stress. No, I'm not going to come. And then when we started to really make some headway, they were asking to come. All right, so now they are all part of the uh, Trinidad and Tobago Animation Association, which is an organization that has animators from all over the world that are from Trinidad. And it's something that we told the Suriname youth when we were here for Cari Festa to form their own association because that is integral, that is critical that we do that. Okay, so these are the sort of out outcomes that, that came about due to that sort of um, proactive approach that we did regarding animation. Training, so we have a diploma in animation, we have a degree in film, we have short courses, we have social courses, we have courses in the prisons. We have co-productions from our government agencies. So, so for instance, 150 tax deduction, 35% rebate. Um, what this did was create interest from international production companies that were, wanted to use the Caribbean. We offer them the rebate and we have Hollywood movies now coming to Trinidad because they get a 30% cash back and a, and a lot of other incentives. So as you see there, there's one, two, three, four films that came from international organizations that used the rebate and created um, jobs in Trinidad because they utilized, um, they, they actually used homegrown talent. And of course with the diaspora, as you, you saw in the, the former slide, Typhus Moore, people like Typhus Moore, Sean Sky, Olin Riley, all these guys are bringing valuable information back to the country. These are other outcomes. We now have one, two, three, four, five, six animation studios in Trinidad and Tobago, and they are producing for the advertising agencies. They are co-producing. Right now, Full Circle Animation is doing an outsourcing project for uh, Universal Studios, and that is true intervention. It didn't just happen. It took us 15 years to do that. By sharing our story, you could cut that down by half, <laughs> which is why I'm here. You don't need to make the mistakes we made. These are sort of the gaps that we have, La lack of, because um, there are definite gaps, lack of specific relevant industry training. Um, so for instance, for outsourcing, there are particular things you need to know um, that needs to be improved, um, access to large talent pool needed. So let me give you an example. The outsourcing job for Universal Studio needs 100 animators. We have 25. If Suriname has 25, right? Those are the kind of realities we have to think about. So we were given a job to do, let's say, 3,000 frames at, let's say, between 50 US to 100 US a frame. Could, that, that's the sort of numbers you're talking, money you're talking. We had to give back 1,005 because we didn't want to take 3,000 frames and not do it. That's the worst thing you can do, all right? But what I'm saying is if that kind of support system could be created throughout the region, through the use of the technology, the cloud we talk about, all those things, we can collaborate on those things because numbers, that's a huge issue. Do I have my time up yet? Um, of course, upkeep with new technology, that's important. Um, access to modern equipment, exposure to real digital media pipelines, again, that's the sort of training we need. And most of all, you need to have access to bandwidth internet capabilities in order for this to work. So, with that in mind, I would like to just sort of share basically my desire for being here is through Vincent here who visited Anime Carib last year. Um, and and we, we, we really connected in the sense that where Suriname is now, Trinidad was there. 
We were there. We were there. I'm telling you, we were there. And I think by us sharing our story, we are able to kind of shortcut your process so that you could, ha could have a very, very positive impact on the economy, on not just um, the money and the education, but on the social, on the social. That's really, really important. Thank you very much for listening to me.